Today I got a brand new Lenovo Flex 5 2-in-1 14-inch laptop. I'm going to do a little upgrading inside. I'll show you how I do it. So let's get started. Morning guys. Dale here. How's it going? Today I got a brand new Lenovo Flex 5 14-inch 2-in-1 laptop. Um, I'm going to do a little upgrading on it for the customer. So... Basically, it, it's a Flex 5. The exact model is 14ARE05, then 81X2. It's got the Ryzen 3 4300U processor in it. Uh, comes with 4 gigabytes of DDR, DDR4 memory, onboard memory, and it's got 128 gigabyte SSD. What I'm going to do is open it up, and I'm going to increase it to a 250 gig SSD. That's all they wanted. Uh, I'm going to install the Samsung Evo 970 Plus, really good, really good drives. Um, unfortunately, I can't upgrade the RAM because there are no expansion slots in this model. I've done a couple of these and I just know we're going to be stuck with four gigs of RAM. So the first thing I'm going to do is shut it down. I am going to do a clean install of Windows 10. I'm not going to clone because there's no data on it yet, so it's going to be quicker really just to do a clean install of Windows 10. I'm going to put the 20H2 edition on it. So once it shuts down here, all right, I'm going to close it up. But it's there. It, it, it's a really good laptop. It's very fast the way it is. But we, they just want a little more storage. So on the bottom here, I'm going to take out all the screws. But these screws aren't Phillips head. They're a Torx bit. It's a T5 Torx. So you can use a you know quarter inch bit like this in your in your nut driver. Or in my case, I got a quarter screwdriver that I'm going to use. But these are. Torx bits, make sure you use a new good clean bit. You don't want to strip out these screws because then that'll be bad. So I'm going to go ahead and get the screws out of here. I've done a lot of these Flex 5s, 2 and one some 15 inch models. And some, a lot of them, most of them let you upgrade the RAM, but in this case, we can't upgrade the memory. It's going to have four gigs of DDR4. So I'm going to take my little spudger tool here, and I'll have a link down below where you can buy these online. Get a whole bag of them for a couple of bucks. So I'm just going to get in start in the seam here along the edge. You've got to be careful of your ports and stuff here. But I'm just going to kind of put it in here and start sliding it along gently. Take your time. And always before you get inside of any project like this, make sure you're working in a good anti-static environment. Use a wristband or anti-static mat. You don't want to be zapping anything. Very important. Get a little upward pressure on it here. Like I said, these usually pop off fairly easy. As you can see, I'm not putting any pressure on it at all. <clears throat> my bench tops are all soft. They're all anti-static as well as my floor. So. I'm all protected. So there, we got it open. And right here is our onboard memory. Right here, and here's our M.2 SSD. It's the 2260. I'm going to put a 2280, as you can see in there, quite a bit longer. So there's one mounting screw right there. But before I do that, we have to get the battery out of here. Now on these, I've done these before, it's actually easier just to carefully, I'm going to take out the few screws that hold the battery in. Interesting. It's just easier, oh, easier to unplug it that way. Uh, oh, cameraman, I gotta grab my screwdriver right here. Sorry, guys. You wanna use good, make sure you always use good tools on these so you're not stripping out screws. Like I'm gonna take out this bad boy here. And there's another one over here. These pop out pretty easy. It's just easier to unplug it from the motherboard because there's no give or no slack in that connector cable that you start pulling on it, you're going to booger it up and you don't want to do that. See, they come out pretty easy. And then there's one over here. Sometimes Lenovo will have a warranty seal over one of these screws. Uh, we just want to get something under it here so we can lift it up. So I'm basically going to lift it up and gently just kind of pull back on it and that should pop right out just like that. 
So it's just easier than trying to booger it out of there. So we got the battery disconnected, but as a, as a precaution, I'm going to open the little lid a little bit, and I'm going to hold the power button in a few times to get rid of any residual juice that might be in the circuits. So there we go. So now I'm going to remove this one screw right here to get the M.2 drive out. You can see they use a little adapter here because it's a 2280 slot, but we're not going to use any of that. All right, so now I'm going to carefully just jiggle it out of there. Sorry, my hand's in the way. <laughs> comes out just like that. We're going to leave that little heat tape there for protection. We're going to put our new Samsung 970 Evo. And we're going to use that same screw to mount it back in here. Just make sure it goes in all the way, guys. You don't want to have to do this over. So that's about it. I'm installing a new SSD. Everything's nice and snug and it looks good. Looks pretty good to me. So now we can carefully put our battery back in. But once you connect this battery, just try not to touch anything in there if you can help it. So I'm going to slide that right into place there if I can. Just like that. Pops right back in. Make sure everything's lined up good. And we'll put our battery screws back in. Oops, these clean installs go really, really quick for the most part. Oops, I think I drank a little too much coffee this morning. <laughs> but, keeps me sharp, I always say. Usually. Like I said, guys, using good quality screwdrivers, Torx bits, makes the job so much easier. You're not boogering up your screws and whatnot. So there we got the core mounting screws back in. So we're going to boot off our flash drive here, our Windows 10 installation flash drive in a second. Everything looks good. So like I said, we can't upgrade the RAM. Unfortunately, there's no expansion slot. So but at least we're going to have a 250 gig NVMe SSD instead of a 128. I just wanted to go up. Now you can put a 1 terabyte or a 500 in there, whatever. Whatever suits your fancy or whatever you think you need. So I'm going to gently snap this back into place. When you're snapping this back together, don't squeeze really hard on the lid because you got your screen in there. You don't want to be blowing your screen out. So I always wait to put my screws back in the bottom pan here just to make sure everything's okay. Once I get the install all done, I'm going to plug in my AC adapter, even though the battery is fully charged, I believe, just to be safe. So now I'm going to take my flash drive with my 20H2 Windows 10 on it, too much tape on it, put it in my USB port. Most of these new um, Lenovo's come with that flip, flip to boot option enabled. Let's see if it'll let me get into the BIOS here real quick. I, I hit F2, I want to go in the BIOS and see if the, um, okay, the flip to boot right here, it is disabled. If it's enabled, that just means when you open the lid, it turns it on. So it is disabled. I'm going to exit saving changes and I believe F12 will get us to the boot menu. It'll probably just try to default to the flash drive but if you hit F12 we get this. So I can go down to my Kingston data traveler, that's my flash drive, and choose that. I'm just going to hit enter and get the clean install going and it shouldn't take too long. I have a little faster, little larger capacity drive. 
it's the, like I said, this is a 2260. It's Union Memory is the brand on it. It's probably just a Gen 2. All right, so we're just going to walk through here, United States. Click install now. And if you, you know, you can easily do a clone before you put the new drive in. If you want to use like a free program like Macrium Reflect, or you can use Samsung's software. You can download from their website or Cronus True Image. There's a lot of choices these days. So now we're on our unallocated 232.9 gigabyte. That's a 250 gig SSD. I'm just going to choose next and let the files copy over and I'll come back in just a minute when it's just about ready to wrap up. All right, guys, we got all the copy or files copied over for our install here. Just going to walk it through the setup here. Um, got to finish listening to Cortana. And all the options that you do in here, basically, you can change later in the settings. So I'm going to choose United States because that's where I'm at. Skip layouts for the keyboard. I always choose I don't have internet. That way Microsoft won't force you to sign, sign in or set up a Microsoft account. That's kind of annoying. Again, all this stuff you can change later. I'm just going to put a name in here. No login, password. It would still be a local account, but we don't need a password. And all this stuff, except location, I disable. Just for privacy reasons. Hit accept. Not now. And I'll finish up here in a minute. If you want to use your existing email address as your login information or create a new one at Outlook.com, you can certainly do that. But if you choose, like I did, I don't have internet. It's still going to activate. You're going to be good. People ask me quite a bit. They see these videos and it's like, well, how do you activate Windows 10? Where's your product key? Well, it's all embedded in the BIOS and the firmware and the laptop. It's not back in the day where you had the product keys where you had to type in. And it was just a pain in the butt. Now, if you had Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro, whatever license was initially, you know, on it when you bought the computer, it should activate with that same license, whether it's Home Edition or Windows 10 Pro. I believe this had Windows 10 Pro on it, out of the box. <clears throat> we'll find out in a second. This is just a really nice little laptop. Got that 4300 Ryzen 3. So now it's searching for display drivers and whatnot because we're not connected to the internet. So let's go over here to our start button. I'm going to jump into settings. And you can see Windows is activated. Otherwise, it would say right down here Windows isn't activated. So I'm going to go to update and security. That looks good. Let's go to system here. And we'll go down here to about. So, okay, actually it's Windows 10 Home, I'm sorry. Um, but there's our 4 gigs of RAM and our Ryzen 3 4300U processor. That all looks good. Uh, let's jump into File Explorer here real quick. It's done with our flash drive. Could have You can take that out right after it reboots from copying the files over. So now we have our 250 gig NVMe SSD right there. Um, I'm going to get all the Windows updates, probably get a few things from Lenovo. The Lenovo Vantage app is a good one to have on these. So there's a, there's a quick little upgrade. Um, customers should be happy. Appreciate you watching. Have a great day.